Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delicio with another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing. Today we're going to be taking a look at The Few and Cursed, a curse chasing adventure based on comics, comic books. Now, I'm not familiar with the IP at all, uh, so I don't have any real connection to that, but I do think the cover is really cool here. One to four players in about 90 minutes. I'm also going to take a quick look at the Few and Cursed Deluxe expansion as well, since that is something that we also have here. So. We'll take a quick look at that as well. All right. It says The Few and Cursed is a deck building adventure game that takes place in a post apocalyptic Earth where most of the water on the planet has, gone, has been gone for 70 years. That doesn't sound encouraging at all. Without water, civilization had just halted any progress and stayed pretty much the same, with the exceptions of the monsters, magic, and curses that showed up. All right. Well, let's. Take a look inside the box. Looks like there's some miniatures in here as well as the cards that you would have in a deck building game. Got some art here. All right, here's our rule book. It's a relatively hefty rule book. Game overview, deck building adventure game, post-apocalyptic. Trying to achieve the greatest amount of grit. Here's our components. Nice illustrated components there. I like how the uh, it's definitely got that comic book feel to it. It's almost in panels here. So set out board and components, select your characters, set up your characters. Goes over the character cards, the encounter decks. Here's the general rules for the game. The phases of play, improvise. Encounter, depending on if you're outside or inside San Andreas. Job cards. Well, the art is certainly impressive. Shopping at the store, your action phase. Different actions, recover an artifact, encounter, defeat a bounty, rob another player, cleanup phase, and ending the game. The game ends when any of the following occurs. If three monsters have been defeated, the current round is completed and the game ends. If all of the artifact tokens have been recovered off the board, the current round ends or com is completed and the game ends. And if a monster figure ever ends around in San Andreas, the game ends. There is some end game scoring at that point, along with a legend of the map. You've got solo variants for the game. You've got a cooperative variant for the game. FAQs for the game, which is always nice. I do like seeing that. And some card reference here, along with a round reference. All right. So, we've got a few cardboard tokens here, not a whole lot. Okay, we've got our board. Oh my, this is a big board. Okay, I don't even know if we're going to get all this on camera, actually. It's a, it's a double-sided, six-fold board. Uh, let me zoom out as far as I can, which is right there. So, I'll just kind of scroll it along here. You can see place for cards, most wanted. Here's our map. And then we've got more cards and more wanted. And then on the, looks like maybe the day side of the board, we've got the same kind of a, of a setup here. So yeah, this is a massive board. All right. And it's a nice looking board. It's just, it's huge. All right baggies, which looks like we're going to need. We've got a large, large, large number of cards here. So there you go. That's a lot of cards. We'll flip through some of those. I don't know that I'm going to look through all of them. We've got some sticker sheet here. We've got some plastic cubes, which I don't think I'm going to take the time to get out of there. Some wooden discs, which I also will not take time to get out of there. We've got our plastic bases for the minis, which I'll look at in just a moment. And we've got some what look to be dual layered player boards, which if there's a phrase that makes me happier in board gaming, I'm not sure I know what it is. Dual layer player boards. That is splendid. So even your deck of cards is dual layered. Now that I'm wondering about, is it hard to get your last card out of there? I don't know. But I do like this. Places where you can, can you pick up that? I think you can probably pick it up. There's Annabelle, there's Jebediah, there's Macenas, and there's Redhead, okay. 
Okay, let's flip through some of these cards. Again, I'm not going to look at all of them because there's just a lot of them. And I also want to take a quick look at the expansion over there. All right, so we'll just flip through some of these. Horse, the Winchester Rifle. So these looks like some items you can get in the game. Maybe some people you can interact with, like a farmhand or a post officer, bodyguard, executioner. Again, if, if you like the style of art, which I, I personally do, it, it, it looks really nice. Okay. Look, look at the standard size cards here. Who doesn't need a good jar of dirt, huh? That's what I always say. Eye of Horus. Wow, the art on that is really, really vibrant and impressive in my estimation. I do like the look of that a lot. I'm not even the biggest deck building fan as a rule, but I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm pretty intrigued by this. I'm, I'm curious how it plays out with the adventure aspect that they're promising, the board play. Seems like there's a little bit more going on here than in a typical deck building game. And the art is nice enough that I'm really kind of wanting to flip through some of these cards. <laughs> All right. Murder of Crows. My name is Hazel. It's a wicked world. Okay, well. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop there with cards because I do want to show off some other aspects. I want to show off these minis and I want to take a quick look at what's in that expansion box. So let's look at some minis here. All right. That would be one of the cursed, I would imagine. <laughs> Said monsters, they promised monsters and it looks like they delivered here. That's pretty monstrous, I would say. There we go. Getting getting an idea of the sculpt quality if you're a, a minis person, which I'm not really knowledgeable in sculpt quality. I know what I think looks good, and I know that I always wish I could paint, and I'm sure I could if I took the time. But anyway, okay, I think that gives you a pretty good idea of the minis that you have there. Let's take a quick look at the expansion. Um, the deluxe expansion. Now, I don't know if this just deluxifies pieces or adds new content. Let's see here. It says adds two more characters, uh, expanding the game to up to six players. Also features upgraded components, the Fallen Immortals expansion, more bounties. Okay, so uh, that kind of answers the question there. Adds a couple of new characters and some new cards aspects to the game. Gives you a rundown of what the expansion, the Lux expansion is all about. Let's take a look at the two new character boards, Alistair Fairweather and Zay Amato. More minis here. All right, I'll show off a couple of these, I guess. Well, that's kind of cool. All right, so see those. Let's see what some of these deluxified components are. Looks like we've got some wooden components here. Yeah, some wooden pieces. Kind of spruce up over these, okay? So basically, looks like these are replacing these. All right. More cards. It's like a little metal token here because why not anytime you can have a metal coin why wouldn't you have a metal coin right sure the rule of board gaming all right well there's the deluxe expansion for the few and cursed 
a, ch a curse chasing adventure. Right. All right. Well, a lot of stuff to take in there. Hopefully you got a pretty good idea of what's inside those boxes. Thank you for watching another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing.